In the Holy Gospel just now sung, our blessed Savior says, This was a Samaritan. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We had the Gospel of the Good Samaritan last Sunday, but the Samaritan comes back in the Gospel today. Our saint, Rose of Lima, in a sense, is our Samaritan this Sunday, for she is like the Samaritan of old, of mixed blood, and like him, she takes in the poor and the sick and the beaten up, and she takes care of them. More than that, St. Rose serves as a kind of a supernatural Samaritan to her city, Lima in Peru in 16th century, the Spanish Empire. And by means of her prayers and penances, she saves it from earthquake several times, as well as from Indian revolt, which were these chastisements brought on by the revolting sins of the Spanish conquerors. She saves it, too, from the threat of Protestant invasion and sacrilege. Her good deeds did not end there. Two continents, the Americas, the Western Hemisphere, claim her as their patroness and protector. And even during her life, she looked out over all the church and its needs because she saw it as the living members of Jesus, her spouse. And she sighed and she worried about everyone. Poor beaten humanity, fallen prey to the robbers of sin and of schism and of heresy. Even the far-off Chinese she prayed for, or the Turks, whom she would never meet. She sincerely wished to be chopped up one day, she said, to save their souls. Or if she could go down and place herself to block the entryway to hell, she would. But she said, sadly, souls, very similar to what Our Lady said at Fatima, are going into hell like dried leaves into the bonfire with an autumn wind. And then she says, and to think they were redeemed by Jesus Christ and at such a price. No wonder she was willing to be cut up by prayer and penance pretty much from head to foot and to suffer too in her soul. At times, the pain of Domini, the pain of the loss of God, which is impossible for us to consider. And all of this These were her two coins, body and soul, every possible suffering to save souls. But she is also this Sunday's Samaritan. That is to say that she's the one who goes back to console the heart of the divine doctor, Jesus, the doctor who heals us, and he sends no bill, the doctor who is so little thanked for all of his benefits. Now, she does this the way you and I could be good Samaritans this weekend, by the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, by Mass, and by Holy Communion and the Rosary. What a saint we have for the first canonized saint of the new world. This Samaritaness shows us the way to reparation. But talk about up to date... She also knows a thing or two about racism. She has something to say about our crazy cult of physical beauty, our vanity of dress, oh, and family fights. She survived her fair share. And also, did she know persevering family love? You you see her dressed in the Dominican habit. She was of the third order wearing a crown of roses because the story goes she was such a beautiful little girl that her mother used to dress her up with a crown of roses and one day to make reparation for the vanity of it all she deliberately stuck herself with a pin to hold the the roses in place so deep by the end of the day they had a very hard time getting it out indeed incredible were the penances of rose of lima the standard fasting and the hair shirt and scourging herself three times a day. 
sometimes going two or three days without drinking, because she never did without her mother's permission, to whom she was so respectful and obedient. And at a certain point, she wrapped three lengths of chain around herself and then padlocked it. When the time came that it had to be removed, the skin came off with it. But under her veil, she wore a silver crown, as it were, of thorns, with 99 sharp pinpoints to prick the flesh and her ears. And for sleeping, she slept out back in the garden in a hut. It was covered with mosquitoes, but they didn't bite her because animals have a way of getting along with saints. But for a bed, she had dragged out an old drawer from the house and filled it with broken pottery and bricks and sharp sticks. And on this, she would sleep. To understand the penances of a saint, you have to see things a bit the way God does. She was able to from her youth. The Pope who canonized her, Clement X, wrote at the occasion that when she was just a little girl, the baby Jesus appeared to her when she was sick. And as he liked to do, he played with her for a little bit. And then he got talking to her and taught her in a way a little girl could understand the value and the advantage of suffering and left her full of joy and endowed with a lifelong love of the cross. The faith was late in coming to the new world, 14 centuries after Calvary were the Americas to know the Catholic Church. But when it came, it flourished. The priest who baptized St. Rose, a certain Father Polanco, a few years before, baptized Blessed Martin de Porres. And they were both of them confirmed by a saint, St. Turibio, who was the archbishop. So there were three saints at the same time, a kind of an earthly trinity, to get things going for holiness in South America. In the meantime, Our Lady took Mexico for herself, Guadalupe, but she didn't forget the land that would become the continental United States. She sent up north martyrs and missionaries and mystics. It was all part once of the great Spanish empire, which almost wasn't. It was meant to be founded on the faith, but it soon foundered because of greed for gold and racism, centuries old. Today's um, epistle leads some to think of the Jews in this connection who were meant to prepare the way St. Paul tells us, for the Messiah to come amongst the Gentiles. But the Jews ended up despising them, calling them a contemptuous name of Goyim, and teaching that salvation would only come for them in submitting to the Jewish nation. And today, of course, they believe that they themselves are the Messiah for all the world. In the old days, they looked down upon the Samaritans, and this racism, which they practiced to a terrible degree, was re is reinforced still today by their Talmud, and of course by modern Israeli policies, whereby the Arabs are despised as a kind of a subhuman species. Now, the same spirit affected down through the centuries, some of the new chosen people, in particular the Spanish. They all had a strong Catholic faith, and when they traveled, they always brought the missionaries with them. But some of them could barely believe that these savages who worshipped devils had an immortal soul. Again, that subhuman idea and they very willingly enslaved them and even slew them. In Peru, up to two-thirds of the Inca nation perished at the hands of the Spanish this way. And this they did rather than to obey what they were meant to do to convert them. These terrible sins, were ex social sins, were expiated by one woman's 
deeds of penance. They say that Pope Clement X, who canonized our saint eventually, when he was presented with the canonization petition and discovered in the file that she had Indian blood on both sides from her mother and her father, demurred at the idea of an Indian saint. And he said, seeing her name, he said, why, there could no more be an Indian saint than there would be roses to fall from the sky. And they say that at that point, the Vatican, the Pope's palace, was covered with roses, and Rose was canonized.